Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. I'm excited yet again because I've got a new loco, or locos actually, there's more than one. Very interesting and very unique. It should be a good one, strap yourselves in, let's go. So back in 2018, a guy called Tom introduced a range of models, he called them toys or models. Basically they were unpainted 3D printed loco bodies designed to fit on Hornby 040s and they weren't based on anything in particular which meant that you could paint them up any way you like and make anything you want. And you might remember the video I did, they were quite cool and a lot of people really liked them. Back when I made that video, Tom was making noises about maybe doing an 040 tender engine rather than just a tank engine, as those were, and he's done it. And what's more, I've got a box. So let's open this box, find out what we've got inside. Now, I couldn't resist opening this up and finding out what's inside myself, so I have had this open, but I put it all back into the box so we can reopen it together, and I'll show you what we have here. So let's do it. So first of all then, a massive thank you to Tom for sending me these to review, it's very very kind of him and pretty exciting. And I should also say I will include a link in the description so that you can go and check out this stuff if you want to. And maybe if you decide to, you can uh, pick one up for yourself, which is pretty cool. Right, let's see this tender engine then, shall we? So here we go. Now we have two locos in here, we have one which is as they come on the website, our shapeways they are, and the other one which is actually been very kindly painted up for me by Tom so that we can see what these would look like. So we've got two packs here, you do buy these separately, we have the loco body and the tender which is complete except for the wheels and coupling which you have to provide yourself. Let's take a look at the loco then, now there are two locos available and I do have both here to show you today. This one has inside cylinders and the other one has outside cylinders. All right, so there we go, there is the loco. I mean, this one's unpainted as you can see, it makes a pretty cool ghost train. But the idea is that you can sort of practice painting locos, you can practice decoration uh, with these and you can do absolutely anything you like. As you can see, the loco looks pretty nice. It's not based on anything in particular, says Tom, um, but he did say that they're loosely based around the sort of typical Victorian designs that you would have seen in the late 19th century which is cool because, like I say, you can paint them up any way you like. Right, I noticed this hasn't got a cab roof, which means probably inside this bag we will have the cab roof. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So does that just go on like that? Yeah, that's a good fit as well. So you'd glue that on. And as you can see, that is a perfect fit. Yeah, that fits pretty seamlessly. In fact, it's staying on. <laughs> that is such a good fit. It's staying on without any glue at all. That is awesome. So there we go. There's the loco. And as I say, these, these also, just like the tank engines I looked at last time, these fit on the standard Hornby 040 chassis. You have to make tiny little modifications to them, but it's certainly nothing major. And I've been able to do it, so you guys should as well, I imagine. Look at that. Now, this tender just reminds me of something narrow gauge. In fact, the loco does as well. I don't know what it is, maybe it's just the spacing of the axles, I don't know, but there's something really cute and narrow gauge-esque about this. So I don't know, maybe if you model O gauge and you've got uh, like a, a double O narrow gauge line as well, maybe this would be cool for you. Uh, I don't really know, I don't really know. But no, those are pretty cool. So hang on, let me hold them together. Uh, it's difficult to imagine what this will be like painted, uh, I mean, but you could do all sorts with it. Now the slight downside with these is unfortunately the price which unfortunately is quite typical with 3D printed stuff, particularly when you've got a company like Shapeways in the middle. So the loco body itself will set you back £32.20, just over £32. And then the tender body itself, or the actual tender itself, will be £26.68. And then obviously you've got to buy the 040 chassis and a couple of wheels for the tender and a coupling if you like which means we're going to be talking around £75 to £80 for the unpainted model. And then, of course, you've got to paint it. It is a little bit on the pricey side, of course. It's not just a throwaway price. Um, so, obviously, bear that in mind. Although, I mean, it's not really that far off from, say, the Hornby Lord of the Isles loco. I say that one because that one was about £80. And again, it had just a dead tender without any pickups or anything. So it's not a bad price at all. And if you want a project, it kind of works out. But it's not dirt cheap, as you might think it would be. But again, it's not Tom's fault or anybody else's. It's just the price of 3D printing. Anyway, enough about that. Let's take a look at the painted version, which is very exciting indeed. So let's have a look at the tender first. 
first. Tom was actually really kind and he said I could choose whatever livery I liked. So I said, why don't you try some sort of LBSC umber livery or something like that? And that is what he did. So here we go, look at this. This looks epic. And I think he did a really good job as well, by the way. Number 175, it says. And he was really kind and he actually sent me the coupling and the wheels to put in, which I did. I've already put those in and it looks pretty cool. So you can get a much better idea of what this tender will look like when it's been fully painted up. I believe they also come with coal. Uh, the other one didn't for some reason, but this one has been pre-fitted, as you can see. And it's quite a heavy tender. It's got some good weight to it. So that's the tender. Let's have a look at the loco then, which is even better. I've already fitted the chassis to it. This is one of my chassis. Look at that, absolutely amazing. I mean, I'll show you some close-ups of this in just a second, but it looks wonderful, completely different from the Holden 101 tank that I took the wheel set off, or the chassis rather, absolutely amazing. So yeah, I now have a mystery 040 LBSC tender engine, which just looks superb. He's done such a good job. And when you think 80 pounds for this, it suddenly looks a lot better. Although obviously it will depend on how good an artist you are when it comes to painting the livery. I don't think I'd be a very good one, incidentally. But there we go. So let's take a close look at this LBSC 040 then. Like I say, it's not really based on anything in particular, but if you know of any engine that this looks like, uh, do let me know down in the comments. Right, let's take a close look. So I never expected to say this, but there it is, the LBSC 040 tender engine up close and personal for you. And to say that this has been hand finished, hand painted, I think this is pretty phenomenal. In fact, you could probably teach the uh, Chinese manufacturers a thing or two about hand painting, because this really is neat and tidy, as you can see close up. And actually, doesn't the Hornby 040 chassis really suit a little tender engine like this? It makes you wish Hornby would actually do this. A little 040 tender engine based on the classic 040 chassis would be amazing. And they could probably do it for about 50 quid, couldn't they? Which would fill a massive gap in the market, in my opinion. I don't think Hornby do a single 040 tender engine, which is a shame. Anyway, back to this model, everything about it is super clever. Look at the way the tender and loco coupled together. It uses the sort of back coupling of the 040 chassis. You have to take the coupling hook off it, which is fairly easy to do. And then the tender just sits on it and the spacing is fantastic. I mean, again, that is better than some commercially produced models. Um, yeah, that's really good. Whether it will handle curves or not, I'm not sure. I've not tried this yet, but I'm sure it will be fine. I'm sure it will be. And this model is a huge improvement over the previous tank engine I looked at. I mean, look at the cab, for example. You've got some actual components protruding there, which look amazing. I don't think you could do that with injection molded plastic, could you? You've got the, uh, he's even done the sort of Sam's Trains insignia on the side of the cab there, which is amazing. I've never had an actual loco like that before. I mean, the level of detail on this, to say the body is a single piece, folks, no separately fitted parts whatsoever, all a single piece. This is really, really impressive. Look at the buffer beam. You've got all of the, you've got the buffers and the little coupling hook there molded on, all fantastic. I like the sort of swirling effect on the smoke box as well. I don't know whether that's just part and parcel of the 3D print, but it looks pretty awesome. The top of the chimney, again, this is all part of the same molding. It's not separately fitted or anything, but he's picked all that out. And look at the lining. He's done a great job with the lining. And the beauty though, really, is that you could do whatever you wanted. You could do whatever lining, whatever livery. You could make up your own liveries. The choice is literally yours, which is the best part about this. Yeah, the loco looks fantastic. And I love the tender as well. There we go. There's a few close-ups of it for you. I mean, yeah, they're not super detailed or anything like that, and the range is called toys or models. You decide. You could make it look like a model if you want to, or you can use it as a toy, although for 80 quid, maybe it's not so much of a toy. But yeah, I mean, the tender looks fantastic. The coal load, I'm, I'm not even sure. It doesn't look like it's 3D printed. It hasn't got that kind of 3D printed texture on it. It looks that good. I think it is 3D printed, though, because on the Shapeways listing, you can see that it has the coal... Uh, which is pretty nice. Around the back, you've got the NEM coupling. Yeah, this is NEM compatible, so that is really cool. And we've got the large D-type tension lock fitted onto there, which is good, and it fits well as well. It's a good fit. Yeah, I'm struggling to fault this, really, and it just looks so cool, doesn't it? I've always wanted more LBS. In fact, I don't have any proper LBSC improved engine green-type locos at all, so this is really, really nice. 
And of course, it's completely unrecognizable from the Holden 040 that I stole the chassis from. I don't think I'm going to put this back on the Holden, to be honest. I like this much, much more. So before we get these down onto the track, there is, as I mentioned earlier on, a little bit of assembly required to get these up and running. Uh, obviously, there's painting to do as well. But besides that, there's a tiny bit of assembly to do. It was very, very easy, but I don't expect you to take my word for that. So I will show you the process and show you how easy it is. All right then, tender first, and the tender is the easy part, very much so. Uh, the coupling's already in, I've just picked an, an M tension lock coupling, put it in there. Of course it's very flexible though, you can put whatever coupling you like in there. As for the wheels, you have to provide them yourself. Uh, I've just got some standard Hornby wheels here, uh, maybe HO ones would work as well, but uh, yeah, I mean standard coach or wagon wheels seem to be all right. Let's see if these ones fit then, uh, so I'll just line up the back uh, pinpoint axle of the axle. Yeah, that's gone in all right. Uh, I think metal wheels are better, but uh, I've got these to hand, so I'm gonna pop these in, rather than having to pinch some, some wheels off a wagon or something. But no, they fit. Uh, it's very interesting that the uh, bearings are 3D printed as well. I mean, are they gonna last? I don't know. It would be interesting to find out. The tender's nice and light though, so my money would be on, yes, I think they will last. But there we go, that is the tender um, ready to go. All right, let me show you what you have to do with the loco then. Next up then onto the chassis. Now for the outside cylinder version, you just take one of the Holden 040 chassis and the only thing you have to do to prep it is remove the back coupling hook, which is quite easy to do. Uh, not so much if you've got the camera, but yeah, it is literally just hooked on. So if I can do this, sorry if I'm covering up the view a bit, you just bend that round with the screwdriver, unhook it and it comes out. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, it's not sort of permanent. You can put that back in if you want to, and that's fine. Now, if you've got the inside cylinder version, uh, like this one's going to be, you need obviously the chassis that doesn't have the cylinders on. And there's one other small modification you have to make, and that is to snip off the little sort of hoops on the motor mounting wire, uh, because apparently they will snag on the new body. But that's all. I mean, you just take even a pair of snips to it. And that's all, that's all that's required, then it will fit on. So let's try this. I haven't actually given this a go yet. And I believe the body fitting works exactly the same as the tank engines I did. The LBS C1 went on absolutely fine. So let's see if this one does as well. It's gonna be difficult to do this on camera. I apologize if I cover this up at any point with my hands. So you get the back lugs on, first of all, like that. And then you bring the front of the loco over and it snaps in place, right. That looks pretty cool. And by the way, yes, I think we've got this year's Halloween ghost train. What do you think? And then, of course, not forgetting the tender, which literally just hooks over the coupling hook, as I showed you. And there we have it. That is the inside cylinder version of the same tank engine, which looks pretty cool and pretty different, actually, once again. Okay, so we're back with the LBSC version, and look at that, isn't it? It's just like the loco I never knew I wanted. It looks that great. So I know full well it's completely redundant doing the whole slow speed testing because it's just the standard 040 chassis from Hornby, uh, but I want to sort of demonstrate it running, so I think I'm going to do that. Also, I want to know how free the actual tender chassis is at running. I mean, it's 3D printed. How well does this actually roll? Well, let's see. Wow. Very well. Look at that. Yeah, pretty free rolling. Whoa, <laughs> bit too free rolling, actually. I can't stop the thing. No, I mean, that is perfectly free, isn't it? That is not going to be causing any friction, really, is it? Uh, which means that the loco should still be able to haul quite a lot of stuff. Anyway, let's give this a try then. Now I've got, which one did I, I use my modern um, Holden tank, which has the lower gearing. So this should actually be able to do a bit of good crawling. There we are, it's not bad, is it? It's going over the express points. Oh, you know, it went over the express points without stopping. That's quite amazing. Oh, but look at this. Doesn't it look fantastic? Like I say, I mean, if you model for realism, this might not be for you at all. But if you just like a good looking loco, which I think a lot of people do, to be honest, uh, this is a good way to get one. Particularly if you've got an interesting idea for a livery and you're not sure if it's going to work or not, this would be a good way to try it out. Because if it does work out, then you've got a really cool loco, just like this one. Yeah, that's nice. There we go, 50% speed. Yeah, that is fantastic. Right, I know what you're thinking. We want to see it haul something. So I've set up some Pullman coaches because I think Pullmans tend to go quite well with LBSC stuff. Uh, we'll see if that's the case with this. Uh, so let's back it up, see how this goes. All right, steadily does it then. Let's back up. Coupled with the coaches. Now, how's the coupling? That's something that uh, sort of professional manufacturers get wrong. 
Let's see if Tom got it right, shall we? Let's see. Forwards we go. Oh, yes. Let's bring it forward so that we can... Oh, a bit of wheel slip there. <laughs> Let's see if we can see if the coupling's actually at the right height, shall we? Yeah, seems to be. Seems to be bang on. I mean, there's a lot that can go wrong, isn't there, you would imagine, uh, if you're sort of creating your first ever locos slash tenders. These seem to be very, very well designed. The loco to tender coupling works perfectly, and the actual tender nem coupling is perfect as well. So, yeah, it's a little bit pricey. Obviously, that is just part and parcel of 3D printing, but it works exactly as it should. And in fact, it works quite a lot better, and it's a bit better designed than some much more expensive professionally designed models. Won't name any brands. And then on the middle line, I've got my Helgen uh, Dapo. Uh, what am I saying here? Uh, sorry, the inside cylinder version. There we go. Sorry, got all mixed up there. Here it comes, the Ghost Train, once again. <laughs> now, this one's one that has the higher gearing. This is an older chassis. Uh, it does seem to work. They do seem to fit the older chassis as well. Uh, it just means that it wheel slips like crazy uh, because it's got quite a few ocean wagons on it. I mean, when you think... Yes, they're tender engines, but underneath they're still Hornby 040 chassis uh, with a bit less weight because obviously the 3D printed bodies aren't as heavy as the Hornby bodies, which is something else to bear in mind. But as you can see, that one works well too. So I thought it was struggling a little bit with three coaches. So because of the spacious body, I was able to fit two 5 gram weights, the first one over the front driving wheel and the second one just inside the cab, behind the cab I should say. And now with some struggling is it actually going to do it yeah it's just about able to manage three coaches so yeah i mean they are a little bit lighter as i say so the pulling power is diminished a little bit but luckily the bodies are reasonably spacious and an extra 10 grams does make a big difference and maybe if you're a bit resourceful or you've got some of that liquid weight or whatever it's called liquid lead is it i don't know uh, maybe you can find some more space to hide even more weights inside. But they look fantastic, don't they? They've got so much charm and character to them. They really have. It's very impressive, that. And you can also see that my weights are completely invisible. They're all well inside the body. So, yeah, they don't spoil that at all. I absolutely love them. That looks so good, doesn't it? That LBSC version. Hmm. I think I might keep the other version with the Ocean Wagons white for now, um, just until Halloween. But then maybe I might actually make good on my promise to try and paint one of them. We'll see, because I never did. I never did paint one of the previous tank engines I had. Too scared and too rubbish at painting things, but no, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do something silly like Garter Blue. <laughs> nope. Yeah, a bit of a struggle there with the ocean wagons, but it's actually managing reasonably well. So there we go. They are great. And like I say, a big improvement over the tank engines we saw. So they're getting better and better. Anyway, let me know in the comments. If you had one of these, if you bought one, what livery would you want to paint it into? Uh, please do share that with me. And like I say, if you want to support Tom and buy one of these, there are links in the description. Yes, they're a little bit pricey, but they do exactly what they should, and they do offer some pretty good practice with uh, your painting, weathering, anything along those lines. And particularly if you just want a fun loco uh, that looks great, a lot of charm to these, as I say, uh, and you want it to be a bit different, a bit unique, something that nobody else has got, and this is a really good idea. I'm really, really happy with mine. In fact, I think this uh, LBSC version is going to become the Sam's Trains engine, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. A little bit of something different, which is always great by me. All right, take care. See you on the next one.